Right now, are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Thank you. You heard what I was saying to that young lady. She's called me before to solve her problems, and then she come back. Some, Sometimes they are just trying to be too bold for me. There are things that you cannot really do to other people. All right, let's go on. This morning will be so, so... I love it. This is going to be great. This is going to be so special. I just love it. I love it. I am loving it. Hello, I am Idikai Mary. I am the American spiritual guide. Why so? <laughs> I see for you, I will reveal what is hidden from you and then create for you the life that you want. Okay, so this does not matter. It doesn't matter what your religion is. If you want me to solve your problem, call me. 316-665-4400. If you live in the Los Angeles area, Come to our Holy Ghost fire where I will solve your problem one on one or as a group. And that will be at the Hilton Hotel by Los Angeles Airport. I'll be waiting for you there. Okay. My main desire in life is not to preach to you or to teach you. My main desire in life is to solve your problem the nagging problem in your life. And it will happen immediately. Or it will come to pass that the problems that have been waging war against you is over with. All right, this morning, let me ask a question. Let me ask a question to those who were at the conference last night. What did we say is our topic for this afternoon. Will somebody be able to tell me? Seizing opportunity when you see one. Seizing, Seizing, when you see one. Seizing opportunity when you see one. Hello, who is on the line? Okay. Seizing opportunity when you see one. My goodness, my studio is very, very beautiful. My God, I'm loving it. I am loving it. Okay. Let's go. Seizing opportunity when you see one. You're right. That is it. Seizing opportunity when you see one. Hmm. There we go. I'm keeping this here. We are focusing our attention on different parts of scripture this morning, this afternoon. We are going to be looking at different, different stories of the Bible. Remember that the story of the Bible was not given, the story of the Bible was not given just for you to read and to know detail and fact of connected and unconnected stories. They were given to you so that you can put yourself in it so that you can become the story. The story of the Bible is given so that you can become the story. I mean the good things in the Bible. There are many things in the Bible that are really nasty. Let's just face it. Especially in the Old Testament. There are things in the Bible 
that personally I will not tolerate it. And God was just dealing with them within their where they wanted God to go with them. How? Let me put it this way for you. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. How how you want your God to be for you is how God is going to be for you. That's how to put it. If you want God to be a little God for you, he will limit himself to just being a little God for you. If you how you want your God to be for you, how big you want him, that's how he will be. How small you want him, that's how he will be for you. And also, depending on your intellectual capacity and expansion, if you are a closed, hallelujah, if you are a closed personality, a closed system, a reserved person, God will be a reserved God with you. If you are passionate, high-spirited, God will be passionate, high-spirited with you. That is one thing I have seen with God that I like about him. How you want to behave, how you want God to be for you, that's where he's going to go with you. So, so also, because when I started asking heaven, why is it that there are so many things in the Bible that I am, I don't like? God, is it the God of Abraham that was telling them this? Who, who, which God is telling them to kill women, rip the children off from their bellies? I mean, there are so many things that when you see in the Old Testament, you will just be totally shocked. Stone people to death. Just so brutal. Very bloody. And I don't like it. Animal sacrifices. Poor animals that has not done anything wrong. It just makes me just so, so, so unhappy. I, I feel so really, really, almost like the point of throwing up when I read those stuff. And then suddenly they spoke to me. Now that's not what God wanted. That's what they wanted. And I saw why, no matter what God tried to tell them, how they are to approach him in a nice way, they were always going towards, they were always very rebellious. And so the animal sacrifices, the warfare was a way of God keeping them busy. Because without something for them to do, they were going to worship the devil quickly. There were always people always wanting to jump into something else very quickly. So God kept them busy with all those sacrifices and all those warfares and all of that. Just let me give you an example of what heaven told me. He said, I'm going to explain to you, son. Don't be offended. Moses was with me for 40 days and 40 nights. By the time Moses was there, Aaron and them were already conniving to become Egyptians again. They were already worshipping a false god. And the witnesses of Moses kicked in, his anger kicked in. And he broke the Ten Commandments. He said, to hell with it. That's, that's what they wanted. That's why you can be in church till the day that you, you leave the earth. You have nothing really to show for it. No healing, no miracle, no prosperity, no money, nothing. It's just food and a shelter. And that's it. And children, maybe. If you were potent and fatal, that's all. And your children are born to repeat the same pattern, the same cycle. Because that kind of atmosphere is controlled by Baal. It's not controlled by God. Wow. That is why I have, I have come to notice that when certain things happen in my life, 
It's not a time for me to go and cry to God because God doesn't respond to people's tears. He does not. Their, their mentality up there is different from our mentality here. So when I go to God with facts and figures, I have you said that I should not worship another God. You said that I should not save another God. It's you I serve. Therefore, this is what I want. Because there's no way I can have this. I don't have anybody to connect me to have this. And your word says that whatever I want, when I pray, I'm, 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 I should get it. I do not want to get those things when I come to heaven. I don't want this lifestyle when I come to heaven. If you cannot give me heaven now, then do not give me heaven then. That's how I pray. I don't want no houses, no jets in heaven. Because by then I don't need them. What I need on earth, it must be given to me now. What Renee needs now must be given to her. Because how can she have a testimony and tell people, God did this for me? Because that's just the way it is. Why should when somebody is growing elderly, then the body begins to break as a sign that they are, old, they are old and miserable? Is that how people in heaven live? No. Therefore, why must we live that way? You process nature into existence. You can also process nature out of existence for us. While nature, work, while nature works for and against other people, nature should just work for us. Period. Not against us. That's why we said yesterday that it is the place of God to bust, bend, and break nature for us. It's as simple as that. If Lucifer bust, bend, break nature for his people, why will God not do it for us? Why must I go through the whole intricate of, I have to listen to 200 messages on faith before I have what I want? I don't want that. Those people, it doesn't happen like that. They sacrifice a human being or sacrifice animals or they pay big money to somebody who is meeting those things and a demon is released to go and do the job. Mine, I have the blood of a king. Therefore, my benefit is big. That's why last night we talked about bonanza, opportunity. That's the reason why God exists. Is to give people opportunity. That's where God is different from humans. And different from devils. Devils don't want to give you opportunity. Other human beings do not want to give you opportunity except few. Geneva, are you there with me this morning? Where are you? Driving. You're driving. Okay. So this morning, I want you to begin to look at something else completely. How do you seize opportunity when you see one? So that opportunity doesn't come to you and keep passing you by. And you have no idea. Three things are needed. Before we even start with this topic. Three things are needed. You must have a combination of the intellect, your senses. All your senses must be fully intact and running. And except you lost one or two of them, yeah, even if that happened, that's not a problem. But you need the gift of discernment of spirit. So if you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, you may not have it. There is also 
There is the gift of discernment, but that will go beyond that. There is also the spirit of discernment, which is different from the gift. And if you walk with Jesus, even if you are not baptized in the Holy Ghost, but you, you, you belong to the King, you belong to Jesus and to the Father, you should be able to begin to walk in the atmosphere, you should begin to walk in the atmosphere of ability to know things. You should be able to have the ability to know things. We call it impression. Something impresses on you. You pay attention to the impression. Can you give an example of that, Pastor? Okay. An example will be something like this. You don't feel good about something. Instead of just brushing it aside, you explore it. Remember what I remember what I teach. If you don't feel it, don't do it. If you do not feel it, don't do it. There is one car lot. You want to go there to go and look for cars. Something in you doesn't feel it. Something impresses on your mind. Something moves from your belly to your mind. Making you to feel like that's not the right place. Those people have not said anything to you. You don't know who they are. And then you drive to the next car lot. And if you want to find out whether the impression is true or not, you go to the one that you had that impression that you should not enter. You enter there, you park your car, you come out, you look around, nobody come out to say hello, good morning, or good afternoon, or good evening. How are you? My name is Osan, so I'm the owner here, or I'm the manager here, or I'm the director. Nobody came out. For you to test that impression, to know that that is from God. Nobody came out. Nobody talks to you. You finish looking around, and as you begin to look at the car carefully, you discover that some of them have problems. Nobody was there to welcome you, nothing. Uh, please, somebody from the Caribbean, please mute your phone. There's somebody from the Caribbean, mute your phone. There are people speaking around you. Somebody, somebody in the islands, because I know the, I know the language, I know, I know the English, so I can tell where it's coming from. All right. And then, let me see. Hold on, let me keep this here. Okay. Then you walk or you drive into the next one that you have a good impression about. You go down there, somebody is out there waiting for you. Somebody is right out there waiting for you. Talking to you, want to do business with you. You tell them, well, I don't really have a good credit or I don't have credit at all. I always buy things because they say, wow, we are willing to work with you. We are willing to do business with you. That's what we are talking about. One of the things that I like about New York and D.C., New York and D.C., is one thing. You come out of your taxi or out of your shuttle to your hotel. Somebody is already standing there waiting for you. Hello, sir. Good afternoon. We've been waiting for you to arrive here. And they take your luggage and they start walking you towards the front desk, take you inside. So you do not need to go around looking for 
Where is the front desk? Where is this? Where is that? It's on already. That's how it is. At least I've experienced that in those two cities. The, especially New Yorkers are best in it. And I saw a little bit of it in D.C. But in New York, boo, they are right there. They run to you because they want business. It's like other people don't want business. You feel, you can feel the atmosphere of something good, the way they treat you. Do you have a good impression about this or about that? Why do I shop at Walmart? It's because it's organized in such a way that there are people to show you things, to do things for you. You go to somewhere else, ooh, and go to that uh, uh, lime so They are shouting at you, and they look so ugly, and they look so bitter and sad. You see their sad faces, the way they look at you, is like they were fighting with devils and with their bosses all day yesterday. I'm serious. They look at you, it's like you're looking at devils. You look at you look at stuff, they look like devils. They, like they're about to, to jump on you. Get to that aisle! The same thing when, when I'm calling A-lines, there are A-lines A -line, that I don't call. I don't use them, I don't fly with them. I don't mess with them. Two airlines, I enjoy their customer service. And Renee is my witness about that. And they are Delta and Southwest. Those are the two. Anytime you call them, they are very nice on the phone. If you call their HR, their customer service, they will find, they will do everything to get you the best airline for the best flight and give you discount. They are very nice. The rest, they will be shouting at you, doing all sorts. I mean, it's almost like they don't like their job. I can see why Delta, KLM, and A France are working together. I can see why Best Buy is still in business. The rest have closed. I see why Walmart is still thriving. Because they have good customer service. And I see why our ministry and business is going to stand the test of time for many, many hundreds of years to come. Like that young woman that called me. I've already, I've already done things for her for free. A month or two ago. And I told her, that's just for you. And then she's coming for another one. That's when I was like, ah, ah we don't do that. That's not fair. There are some ministry that will not even pick up the phone to even talk to anybody. No matter how much money you donate to them, the, the person that runs the show is not coming. The preacher person is not coming to talk to you. Why? Because they don't want problems. They don't want to be anybody's burden or responsibility. Because it's a huge thing. And it's a legal thing. How do you see opportunity and seize one? When you see opportunity, how do you how, how do you know this is an opportunity? One is you need it's not everybody who has the gift of discernment of spirit because it's a gift. It's an anointing of his own. So you need the spirit of this. You need the spirit of discernment. Number two, you need impression. Ability to see things. And what do you see? Coordinate with what you are thinking. With your spirit. With your mind. And something goes yes 
or no? Next, you need the gift of suspicion. It's very important. It's very, very important. I'm not talking about addiction to suspecting everything. Everything is devil. Everything is wicked people. Everything is this. No. Suspicion is the ability to have the impression about that this thing is right or wrong, is good or evil. Something is not right here. Because of what I'm seeing, it seems to me something is good about it. Suspicion is not always about something wrong. That's the way I look at it. I feel because of what I'm seeing, it sounds to me like this is a good opportunity to seize. Because of what I'm seeing, because of what I've read, I've, I've, I've had all the information, I've gone through them, and, and, and I've been there, and I saw this, I saw that, I saw that. Something in me suspect that this might be a good thing. Something in me suspect that this might be a bad thing. That is it. You must have all those things playing out at the same time. Then, how do you respond intellectually? You must have the gift of what we call active intellect. Active intellect. Which is the gift of quick to understand something. Quick to penetrate something. Please write those things down for me. What is active intellect? The ability to quickly penetrate something. Quickly understand something. You don't delay it. You must have that playing out. You must have the ability to penetrate what somebody is trying to sell you about their company, their business. You should be able to, that is where being a Christian gives you an advantage. Because you have, sometimes you have angels whispering to you, talking to you loudly. You should be able to ask God for angelic ministration, which means angels' ability to talk to you like I'm talking to you, one-on-one. -on -one. You hear it. For example, someone is talking to me. Somebody is talking to me about something. And suddenly, I hear another person behind me telling me what that person is saying about me. So that, so as to make me to know that what that person is saying to me physically is not true. The person behind me is repeating what he has already said before I arrived. So I stood up and I said, uh, thank you for saying this. What about this? You said this a minute ago before I was here. Everybody say, what? What? Who, who called? Who texts this guy? I said, nobody texts me. Nobody emailed me, but I know what he just said about me. A few minutes before I arrived. See, that's what we are talking about. He's placed and he's nice, he's gentle, he's reserved. He doesn't talk much. Yeah, he's a nice man. But this is who he really is. So you need the gift of angels. You need to tell God, I am willing to see angels. I am willing for angels to do business with me. I am willing for angels to talk to me loudly. Face to face. I am willing, I am willing for angels to talk to me. Yeah, you need that. Another thing that you need is... If angels are not talking to you, the Holy Ghost penetrates the atmosphere. And the Holy Ghost records what people say about you. If you didn't know it, know it now. The Holy Spirit do record what people say about you.
And when those people are saying nice thing about you face to face, the Holy Spirit will begin to play what they've said about you a year ago, 10 years ago, 20 years ago. I mean, he will play it for you and you will be hearing it at the same time that that person is saying something nice about you so that you really know what they really think about you. That's what we are talking about. So that nobody fools you. Oh, you are my boo. Oh, you are my girl. Oh, you are my this. You are my dad. You are the only one. And the Holy Spirit brings the theater out in front of you. Brrr, the movie theater drops down from the sky. And you begin to see who are the real boos of that woman or that man. So that you do not seize what you think is an opportunity and you do not know that you are seizing something that doesn't belong to you. You are seizing what is not yours. Yay! You are seizing what has been put together to fool you. Because if people are able to fool you, they will never respect you. That's why you need to see into the supernatural ability of the Holy Ghost to make you see things from your spirit. From your spirit, you see things how they are in the physical. For the, I, I hope, I don't know whether you are aware that for the past 10 years, America has been bewitched. And not only that, you can take this country far back to hundreds of years back. And you can see how this country was established by greed, by manipulation, and was established by witchcraft, the occult. I mean, somebody was able to put witchcraft on the nation and the nation voted for him. And leaders of the world, most leaders of the world, their hands are into, their hands are soiled with human sacrifices. Their hands are soiled with animal sacrifices. You are here arguing about devil doesn't exist, demon doesn't exist. Those people are using those things to, to stay in power. You are here arguing. I don't think Jesus exists. I don't think Lucifer exists. I am an intellectual. I believe in, in science and technology. I don't believe in any of those things. Until you realize that when you reach some way that you want to be promoted and they do not want to promote you, you try to penetrate that. They hit you with sickness. Then you know. I hope you know that all sickness doesn't come because of gems and germ. What I mean by that, viruses and gems and all kind of stuff. And nature. Somebody can pronounce a sickness on you. Any kind of sickness. They can put it on anybody. Poverty could be pronounced on somebody. And that person will be broke. The business dies. Everything goes. I hope you know that. A woman told her daughter-in-law that I told you to leave my son. You refused. You went ahead to persuade my son to marry you. You are going to see what will happen to you in that marriage. And she left. She left the wedding ceremony. Entered the car and left and left. Did not stay. The son was like, Mother, why are you just so... Why don't you just accept this girl in here? She said, uh-uh. Something in me doesn't like her. And I and the mother stood there and made a pronouncement and said, as long as you are married to this man, you will be smelling like, um, like um, a, a trash can. I pronounce 
an order, a nasty order on you. And she left. From that minute, that girl began to smell rotten. Her breath, her body began to smell rotten. Have you ever met people whose body, who, whose flesh smell like rotten? You can't sit near them. If they talk, it's like you're going to throw up. And they use all kind of medical thing to solve it. No way. Pronouncement, spell, curses, witchcraft. Those are those are things that happens, and that is why the best solution, antidote to those things, is by being a Christian and spirit filled, so that no matter what anybody try to send to you, cannot penetrate you. It's rather you who, when you make a pronouncement against them, they are finished. Because you simply you carry the law of power. When I meet people who are witches, I tell them, I'm not going to talk to you about the law of power. I'm going to, because I'm, I'm just being too nice. So I'm going to be as nasty as you guys are. Okay? So let's talk, let's talk the language of the other side. I hope you understand the law of the vampires. Do you? They say no. So okay, then why are you a witch if you don't know that? You don't know the laws of the vampire? They say, no, we don't. Then why are you a witch? I said, let me repeat what the law says. When a big power appears, the small power must go. So the big power is now here. And if you want to try me, bring out your crystal ball and try to see. Because I'll block it. Try to see for somebody because I'll block it. You can't. And that is always true. All the time. If I'm there, they cannot. Because I'm using their own law against them. It's like the law of day and the law of night. When it's time for day to come, day comes. When it's time for night to come, night comes. If the, light, if the house is dark, turn on the light. And darkness has no reason to say, I, no, I can't allow light to come. It's not allowed. Because it's already pronounced into nature by God, by Jesus himself. What we Christians are doing is trying to hide Jesus so as to make us look acceptable and respect, respectable before human beings. We try to hide the real things about Jesus. What, what all these people are enjoying is because Jesus put them into place. If he withdraw them, they will not have it. It's about time we let them know that what you guys are enjoying comes from our religion. Go ahead, my dear. What is that? Does it have anything to do with, does rank play a key role in that, in the spirit realm? Uh, what, what, what kind of rank? Huh? What, what kind of rank? Like if your opponent, okay, is evil, and they're like a higher up ranked in the spirit, in the, in the dark, in the world of darkness. Take for instance, what I was going through, I was not able to defeat the enemy by myself until I came under uh, your ministry. Okay. Um, number one, you didn't have the right knowledge where you were before. Number two, they didn't help you to properly be filled. Number three, they did not teach you about power. How power operates. Because it doesn't matter. That was intentional. That was intentional. Yes. They didn't, they, didn't, they didn't take you to the place of power so that you, you got involved in it. And you were in it. So, so the power of God is not just handed over. 
you must want it. And they say, where you get it? It's not something that comes to you because you receive Jesus. It's something that you must want it. It's a different ball game altogether when we come to power. The power of God is exercised when the person of the Holy Ghost is involved with you. And then you start growing with the Holy Ghost. Just as I'm doing. Just as we are doing. Yeah. Then the power of the Holy Ghost begins to increase. And then it doesn't matter the kind of principality or the kind of throne or dominion that try to come against you. you, you it does not matter. There you go. But also, even there is even more. There is even more. When you begin to add fasting and meditation on the word, not just reading the word, not just hearing a sermon by other people, but something that comes out of you, you begin to think about scripture from inside you. Okay. Then you begin to put sacrifices on the altar. My dear, it doesn't matter what kind of principality because you become one. When once you become a princess in the supernatural, when once you become a prince in the supernatural because of the level of the Holy Ghost in you, with you, through you, is on, baby. So we have covered the the we have covered the different things that need to be in place for you to spot opportunities. So that when you see opportunity, you will go for it without making mistakes. Why I'm saying this is because I do not want you to see something that looks like opportunity and you go for it. And it is not. That's, that's what I'm talking about. Because there are so many things that look very nice. That have the appearance of opportunity. Another thing that you have to do is look at things in detail. Think about things in detail. Don't be in a hurry. To make decisions. When it comes to decision makings about certain things that have to do with money, life, death, your future, your past, your present, it needs to be done in detail. Tell people to give you time. Another thing, anything that people are hurrying you into, back out. Please write it down. Anything any human being is trying to hurry you into, back off. Just back off. The reason is, for somebody like me, anything that I do not sit back to think through and to plan, anything I do not plan for, do not work. If I did not plan for anything, it's not going to work for me. I must fully plan it myself. Not anybody planning it for me. There are things that I need people to help me do, to plan. But when it comes to certain things that has to do with life and death situation, the future, money, material resources, land, your car, you, I mean, let's go for it. You need you and you and you to sit and plan. Because if you did not know, relationship is a business. People are relating to you based on they want something. They are not just relating to you for free. There's nothing free. There's a profit somewhere, even if it is unspoken. There is something quiet that contains money and material resources.
Charity is not done for free. Those who receive the charity are the first orphans. They are the ones who pay themselves first. You have to be aware of all this. I don't want you to see things and you run for it and you think that is opportunity. Or because somebody gave you a, a prophecy that you are going to be a millionaire and you think you are going to be one. You have to, you have to investigate that. You have to take it to God and say, is this real or not? And you yourself need to sit down and look at it constructively and see. And let me also tell you something you need to know about prophecy. Every prophecy given to you is God sending you to go and do a job. <laughs> Every prophecy you receive is God telling you to get ready to work. Because you are going to participate to bring it about. So it's not just some people receive prophecy and they just go away. Yeah, God, God will do it for me. I receive a prophecy to go into special ministry. It's not God who is doing it. It's me. God's presence and power follows me. Opportunities follows me. But I am the one who is paying the price for it. <laughs> God wants to save the world. Jesus paid the price for it with his blood. So I want you to get it. Lord, I want real estate. Lord, I want this. Have you gone to real estate school yet? Do you know the game? Do you know the politics behind it? Do you know the racisms? Do you know where you can buy and rebuild and make money? So now we are ready to talk about seizing opportunity now that we've talked about the different things that need to be in place for you to know this is real and this is not. Another thing is consultation. Do you have the right voice? Somebody who've already succeeded. Do you have the right voice to consult? Who is the voice for you? Who is an eye for you? Who has, who has more eyes to see for you? That's what I'm talking about. So that you do not go into things that you think this is an opportunity. I mean, they write, oh, this guy, whoa, they say this guy living overseas. This woman living overseas. Wow, she must be, whoa, you start seeing the dollar sign. Whoa, na, 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 na. And when you come in, you realize the different ball game. That's why almost everything you see on television that they are telling you, half of it is not true. Everything, it's a eh? It's a smoke screen. Yeah, it's a smoke. It's a smoke screen. Everything they are telling you on advertisement, how this is one hundred percent free. It's one hundred percent free. It's not true. So that's why, I, that's why when I see things, I don't rush into it because they have a good advertisement about it. Looks so good. It's easy to fix. So good. Just 9.9. .9, just only. Easy. Take this credit card. It's loaded. We can start you off at 5,000. Your credit is good. And they don't ask you whether you have a job to, to maintain, to sustain that credit card. And fools rush for it. I've never seen an uh, I've never seen any angel of God with a credit card. But I've seen angels with debit cards, which is personal checking on savings. <laughs> I'm playing on words now. Just letting you know, God doesn't want to use somebody else's money. It's in a very rare cases that Jesus go to ride somebody else's donkey. God, there is nobody to do for God to use to solve that problem. Then you will hear God clearly tells you, 
get go to that bank and ask them to give you a loan of so and so amount for you to fly and go to so and so place. Immediately you reach that place, the money will be waiting. Return the first thing. Return their money to them. Keep the rest for yourself. And I did that. That's how I came to America. First thing, the money was there. And I returned it back. It's very rare for God to do that. It's always you use your own money or you wait until your own money is available. Yep. And you don't know, they, a lot of people want you to have credit card. A lot of people want you to come, let them repay your credit and so on. Some people were calling me that they want to repay my credit. I told them, I don't even have credit. So what are you guys trying to repay? Who told you that I have credit? I buy things cash. Since I came to America, I have no loan. I have no debt. Oh, we might have mistaken you for another person. I said, sure, you did. Bye. I went to buy uh, something and uh, and my bank said to me you don't have credit you need to take a credit card you need to do this you need to you need to do something so that you have a lot of credit I said thank you because something I have been told by heaven how I'm going to get certain things that people get by loan because I want to avoid pain that's the whole thing. I want to avoid pain and stress. My body cannot take certain kind of pain and certain kind of stress. I've passed through it already a long time ago, many, many years ago, where I was born, and I didn't come to America to come and repeat it. <laughs> Except you are strong enough to fight dead people. Like I said, there is, there is a lady, she owes so much debt. I've never seen anybody owe that kind of debt. She's making a lot of money. That woman makes about $3,000 a month. But that woman is always at payday loan, this loan, that loan. I was in the presence of that woman and her husband. When her phone rang, and it was the debt collectors, and she was she was fighting them over the phone. She was telling them, cursing them, how dare you call me when I'm talking with my husband and my minister and that and that. How dare you? What kind of debt is it that I'm owing you guys that you guys will not allow me to rent? Please get out of my phone. And they started quarreling. See, there are people with such energy. We call it people with chaotic, negative personality. Please write that down. You marry those kind of people or you're involved with those kind of people, they will make you sick. You have a heart attack. They themselves will not because that's their personality. Wherever they go, they create problems, chaos. They can handle. They can handle. They can create problems and they can handle it. The husband told me that when, when she comes home, she turns her phone off. All the crazy people will be calling because they know when she's home. She turned it off. She made sure that they don't the, the company doesn't put her money in a bank. They give they give it to her in a check and she goes to Walmart to cash it and put it in her own kind of card. So you see, there are people who understand who they themselves are thieves, they are con artists, and they know how to con the con artists too. There are people who have that kind of mentality and energy for such things. You don't. Those things doesn't mean anything to them. People like Donald Trump. Those are the kind of people I'm talking about. They can create any kind of problem. It doesn't matter to them because that's how they try. They succeed in where problem is happening. Where things are really nice and calm and good, they fell. I want you to be aware of this. So you have to make sure that the opportunity you are going to, that you are seeing, is not a false one. It's not something that is going to destroy you. 
I'm going to pause the recording here, the video here. Go and grab a cup of tea or coffee. I'm going to make me a cup of a cup, a cup of hot chocolate, and I'm gonna bring it back here, and we're gonna start the real topic. I've exhausted everything that you need to know so that you do not grab the wrong opportunity. You do not go and grab the wind and thinking is opportunity. You don't go into relationship thinking is opportunity. There's a lot for you to look into. There's a lot. So don't base, don't, don't base your assumption on spirit alone. Don't base whether the opportunity is opportunity based on prophecy. Please do not. Don't do it. Do not base your life on prophecy. I've already said that to you many times. Base your life on the Holy Ghost and your own mind. What is your mind telling you? What is your inner person, the inner you, the real you saying to you about something? And if, and if you if you if you don't feel good about something, give it up. Even if even if that person loves you, cares about you, and so on, it will not always be so in the years to come. And God always sees the future. That's why whatever I try to do, I always ask God, be the eye, be the mind, be the brain, that thing that sees that beats for me concerning this particular thing. I want you to see this for me. You can see who this person is going to be. You can see what this company is going to be in the next few months or weeks or years to come. I cannot, but you can. And sometimes God gives me the ability to see into it. Why? It is to protect you from heartache. From unnecessary litigation. Unnecessary this, unnecessary that. From crying, from pains. That's what you are trying to avoid. Don't, because one of the things that we do, and God doesn't really like us when it comes to that. A lot of things we Christians do, we do them out of competition with other people. The way we, we treat our children, we are, we, we are competing with other families how, how what they bought for their children, so we want to buy for our children. Because, because Mr. A and the, and, the, and, the, and, the, and the husband moved to the suburb where they drive for an hour before they come to the city because that is, that is the fag, that is the tag, that is the, that is the raining things. You, you have more land, you, you're living by yourself, you're not living with all the rest out there. You don't want all that multicultural, you want to preserve a race and a way of... So you move out. And you forgot what the Bible says. That a particular people separated themselves. They live on their own. The Bible called that careless. God says it was careless. And the enemies came and killed them all up and take over. That's why you have to live at least. You must have people around. People will not come to attack you when, when there are other people around. You see nice, quiet countryside, very beautiful. Little town, little cities. Everybody's wealthy. You go in there, there are people selling drugs. There are prostitutes there. And then one day, one of one of them will rise up and start shooting everybody in the same city. One of them. Some quiet, nice place. Where all the kids were well raised. All the men were well groomed. Are well groomed. And bad things. Somebody is killing somebody and hiding their body. From that, from that nice place. I want you to be aware of all of this. All of this. Spend time 
to make decision. Because decision making is going to be vital for you to seize opportunity. I'm going to show you something before we end this session. Because in five minutes we are coming back for the next session. Because we have to get this over with. It was not God that told Abraham that the three gentlemen who are passing by his streets were angels. God did not tell Abraham that. The Holy Ghost did not tell Abraham that. Did not speak audibly. How did Abraham know? We are going to begin from there. That's where we are going to begin in the next five minutes. Go and get something to drink, something to eat. I don't care whether you got your food in front of you and eating and listening. Go and get, go and get you a lunch. Bring you a lunch. Five, ten minutes, bring you a lunch and come and sit down. Because this is going to be crucial. There is something about to happen, especially to those of you who are going to participate in the Fasting for Champion. There is something that is about to happen on planet Earth. And you are going to become part of it. If you have not been saving money, begin to save money. Because certain things are going to go on sale. Let me throw it out for you. Rene, write that down and remind me of it. Annie, do that. There are certain things on planet Earth that are going to be on sale. What, what does it mean when you hear something is on sale? What does it mean? Everybody watching find jobs. Huh? What does it mean when you hear that a product or a service is on sale? What does it mean? Well, come on now. Come on. Come on. Somebody should tell me. Okay, the last, the last person should speak. One person at a time. What does it mean when they say something is on sale? Good. That's Geneva speaking. Discounted, sliced, fifty percent, seventy percent. God has asked me to tell you to begin to put money aside. That under no circumstance or circumstances should you touch that money. Because certain things on planet Earth are going to be on sale. And God is going to depend on you to buy them. We are not talking about clothing or handbags or shoes or perfumes or jewelries or hair product. No, that's not what we are. We are not talking about health and beauty. No. There are certain things that are going to go broke. And they are going to be liquidated. And God is going to invite you to cash it in. What I am doing this afternoon is to begin to prepare those of you who, are, who will be participating in the Fasting for Champion. I'm throwing this in to let you know the kind of thing that will be happening in the Fasting for Champion. I'm not going to tell you more than what I've just said. Because I'm not allowed to. There are things on planet Earth that is going to be on sale. And the Holy Ghost will tell you. I personally will call you. And tell you there it is. In your nation. Cash it in. Cash it in. For those of you who are going to come to, to that, um, for those of you who are going to be at the, at the, um, at the, uh, at the fasting for champion, there's, there's, there's something that is going to happen on the, on the Thursday nights, 
and on Good Friday is something that will happen very mysteriously and very strangely. Something will happen. Someone in heaven has asked me to tell the participant what they are to do. There is something that they are going to put their name on because you are going to be needed to cash it in. Okay. I'm ready for that. Because it's one little thing God asks you to do that makes you a billionaire. The rest will become history. Go and find your lunch. Geneva, go and bring lunch. I need lunch. Yeah. What lunch do you want? Uh, I want flying fish. I want flying fish. I need to eat Caribbean food today. What do you want? Big food and the bread? Oh my gosh, that will be. See? Yeah, so everyone, please go and bring your lunch and sit in front of you and um, and and start eating so that we can begin the next session because we need to finish this. Um, Karin, Karin, what food are you cooking for me? That's why I asked you if you want big food and the pig. That would be nice. That would be nice, but, but I don't want no pig revenge. I don't want no pig revenge. <laughs> uh, however, I'll not get the next session with I already have to go this afternoon. So I'm leaving the house now. Okay. Uh, later. Okay, so, thank um, you. When I get back by six, I'll listen. Okay, thank you very, very much. Okay. You too. All right, okay. please, please, Um, if you want to charge your phone, charge your phone and come back in five, ten minutes. We will be, we will be back in here, bring your lunch. Um, so if you want to leave the conference, the conference line, you can leave the conference line, go and grab a little lunch and come and sit and eat. And it's going to be, it's going to be amazing this afternoon. This is, this is interesting. This is what real, real ministration is about. All right. If you have not yet registered for the Los Angeles conference, uh, please go and do that as soon as possible. Thank you. Bye-bye.